Good evening, everyone, and welcome. Day number 160. Took me a couple of minutes to fire it up. I fired it up. I don't know where it went. Um, something goofy happened on the company I use, but fortunately, able to dial it in real quick with no problem. So thank you for being here tonight. Um, thank all of you who join on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, Twitch, and Reddit. Um, we have a great, great community. It's growing every day, as you can see. In fact, one of our great members just sent me a message. Um, Malcolm Beals. He's one of our guys from Great Britain. Malcolm sent me a message um, just a moment ago. Of course, we do watch what is happening in Great Britain because that will have an effect on Ukraine, Russia. And it looks like it's Everything's also going to have an effect on China and Taiwan. But Malcolm Beals, he's got a name that's unique, sent a message. He said, hey, Greg, been able, unable to catch it live last few days, but been keeping up every day. He says, a conservative vote for the next U.K. prime minister has been delayed due to information from United Kingdom cybersecurity authorities. It's a part of their defense system, he says. There is a major threat of hacking and interference with the result of the election. And then Malcolm put a question in there. I wonder who that could be. Of course, we all know probably. Rosia, Putin, Kremlin. We'll see. Um, but that is an update from Malcolm Bills there. So I like to share when you guys send things. Clip Z. Welcome. From Texas, Firecracker 10, nice to see you. Jennifer Grover, Ricochet, Pact Act was passed. Yes, sir. Lots of people help with that one. Rita Berryman, welcome down there. Rick Berry, Slava Ukraina. Yes, sir. Rogue Gaming, Ricochet, welcome to you. As always, you are prophetic. Paul Kiss, resident Canadian, Pennsylvanian. Carol, out in California, welcome to you. Lennon Harrell, welcome. Jeffrey Burnett, thank you as always, sir. Pat Schof, Chuck Pinkham, Kevin Sheffield. Thank you. We're number two tonight, Kevin. <laughs> Welcome, guys. A lot to get to tonight, and let's just right on it. I'm um, going to talk about some practical things map-wise first. We'll start here, and want to give you guys an update. Today in Lviv, starting on the left, you see the red X there above Lviv. Of course, this is on the Ukrainian border. <sighs> 40 miles from the Polish border, but basically on the border. Um, this is the place where we do run our humanitarian aid. That's not inside information. That The whole world knows that. Um, humanitarian aid and military aid all flows through Lviv. North of Lviv, four missiles did hit targets today. There were many, many missiles that were shot down over Ukraine in the last 24 hours, some of which which. Uh, the cities marked in blue, Zhytomyr, south of Kiev, Vinitsa. And I wanted to give you guys an update since I zoomed so much into the map here. If you look at Lviv on the west and then the arrow drawn to Kiev, how far is it? Well, as the crow flies, 280 miles. And basically, that's almost halfway across the nation maybe three-eighths, um, and then many times, and tomorrow night, by the way, going to have Jacob back in here with me. He is finishing out all those weeks of camps with refugee kids and should be back in Khmelnytsky in the morning. Speaking of Khmelnytsky, that's the city with the lower era. That's our base of operations there. Everyone knows that. Um, how far is it from Lviv to Khmelnytsky? 130 miles as well. Chernigiv, all the way up in the top of the map on the far right, the city that was very active early in the war, once again has become reactivated under shelling um, from that pocket. Um, that place is being demolished again from the shelling from the um, Belarusian border. Now, with that said, I do have a little video clip I want to share with you. This is a gentleman in Chernigiv. It'll let you see a little bit of the environment. His home was destroyed. He's either third or fourth generation there, and um, you can take a peek at him here. 
Здесь как бы пра 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 дед. Куда вы ели с этого дома? Вот был мой дом. Вот это был мой дом такой. Видите? А вот здесь его осталось. И что собираетесь делать? Строить дальше будем. Будем жить. Картошка есть, огурцы есть, помидоры будут, все нормально будет. Надежда есть. Так. Надежда умирает последнюю. Хохлы не умирают так. Хохлы работают. He is 100% correct, and that is a typical Ukrainian grandfather, Ukrainsky Dedushka. And that is the character. I'm going to rebuild. What are you going to eat? I've got tomatoes. I've got cucumbers and potatoes all as well. Are you giving up hope? Of course not. Ukrainians do not die. We fight to the end. Um, clip Z, my wife told me a client of her hus her's husband is being deployed to Poland. We sending troops to help Ukraine? No. Uh, we do have troops in Poland and all throughout uh, Europe, um, but no, no known troops crossing the border. We'll put it like that. Um, now, moving on, I want to move to the next zone and update you guys. This is in the Donetsk region. Released from Kiev today was the information that this today, along with the Bakhmut area, was the hottest zones for battles some key cities here that i've never zoomed in for you but i want you to be aware of the blue line is the m30 highway that basically takes you from donetsk formally um all the way to nipro very very big vital traffic artery coming out of donetsk getting into central ukraine on the line, we've got four major battles going on right now, starting at the top. The first one is Avdivka, double I in the name there you can see. Then we have Piski. We also have Krasnohorovka and Marinka. These are the four places. You may ask tonight, what size are these cities? These towns right here that are in battle right now range between 25 and 50,000 people in each. Just think about it. I, I try to get us to reflect on size. 25 to 50,000 um, per. And these are the four hot villages there in the Donetsk region. Now, want to look quickly into the east. This, of course, is Kramators. This is the area you know well. I've got two cities circled tonight, Solidar and Bakhmut. Bakhmut and Solodar are the places of significant shelling and pushing that is coming forth. Um, right on that line, Berovka, Yagolovka, Bakhmutchki, and coming up from the south um, on that M3 highway are the Russian pushes. Once again, for reference, how far is it from Bakhmut to Kramatorsk? 20 miles. So, it's difficult to comprehend when we zoom in so much, um, but it is 20 miles. Now, with that said, um, one more thing I want to zoom into here, and then I'm going to give you an update from UATV tonight. This is actually below Zaporozhia. I've zoomed in once again here. This is wrapping right around from Inogardar, where the nuclear power plant is. It would just be to the left a little bit. Well, this pathway here, I put a border guard there. I have a red circle in the town of Volodnovka, and then it goes to the blue line going north towards Zaporozhia. This is the only way out of the Hedersan region. People are wrapping around and trying to escape. Up at the upper right-hand corner, I have a number there or a fraction, a ratio, 120. What does that mean? Well, for every 20 vehicles that is trying to leave the occupied territory, only one makes it. Now, do not be misinformed. The other 19 are not destroyed. They're turned back. So the average right now is 5%. Yeah, 5%. One out of 20 cars are able to make it. Now, what 
are the Russian forces, the military police, doing there to turn the 19 back? Here's what they're doing. When people try to get through the occupied territory into Ukrainian territory, there, of course, there are block posts. So at these block posts, at these checkpoints, the Russian forces will make cars sit for three, four, and five days. No water. There's no snack stand, no 7-Eleven, restrooms in the forest. Um, and what happens is people, due to sheer exhaustion, turn around. They leave. And occasionally, they will let some vehicles through. So that is what's happening there on people trying to get out. Now, I do have a video from UATV. I want to share this with you. It's going to talk about many of the things I just showed you on the map. Here we go. The Russian army fired Smirch anti-aircraft missile systems and S-300 missiles at the Mykolaiv region overnight. As a result of the attack, the dormitory of a university was damaged. One person was wounded. According to preliminary information, no casualties were reported. Residential buildings were also damaged. Mykolaiv is under heavy shelling, but during the ceasefire the city tries to live a normal life and even soon the ports may start working there. The head of the regional military administration Vitaly Kim talked about this with Minister of Infrastructure Alexander Kubrakov. How possible is the opening of the ports will become clear in a few weeks. As for the horror of the shelling, yes, it is said, our infrastructure suffers a lot, they destroyed the city. But fortunately, we have a few killed and a few wounded. St. Nicholas keeps us safe. That's why we are not Mariupol. Everything is open and the stores work. On August 1st, Russian occupiers shelled an evacuation bus in the Kherson region. Three people were killed. Five managed to be evacuated to Krivi Rih. Two of them are in extremely serious condition. There was an attempt to evacuate seven civilians from the occupied village of Starosilia in a red minibus. In the vicinity of Dovhova village, the occupiers shelled the bus at point-blank range with an anti-tank guided missile. The Ukrainian armed forces hit a train with military equipment, ammunition and manpower near the Brilivka railway station in the Kherson region. Also, the Ukrainian armed forces destroyed four ammunition depots in the Boroslavka and Bostanka districts, and aviation carried out two strikes on enemy strongholds in the Oleksandrivka and Blahodatne districts. The enemy fired 16 rockets from the smashed MLRS at the Zelenodolsk thermal power plant and simultaneously fired 40 shells from Grad MLRS. Two buildings were destroyed, but no casualties were reported. Three times the enemy helicopters attacked our position in the Bereslav and Kakhovka districts of the Kherson region, as well as in the Bashtanka district of the Mikulayev region. No losses on our part were reported. The armed forces of Ukraine repulsed attempts by the Russian occupiers to advance in several directions of the Donetsk region. According to the general staff of the armed forces of Ukraine, the enemy tried in vain to storm the area of Avdivka. Fighting continues near the village of Piske. In the Bakhmut direction, the enemy shelled military and civilian infrastructure near Yakovlivka, Solodar, Bakhmut. Kodema, Semihiria, Maiske and Zaitseve. There were airstrikes near Solidar, Yakovlivka, Semihiria, Pokrovske and Bilogorivka. Ukrainian soldiers repelled assault actions near Yakovlivka, Vershina, Kodema and Maiske. Hostilities continue in the areas of Bakhmut and Zaitseve. The humanitarian situation in the occupied cities is getting worse every day. The Russian invaders are unable to provide basic necessities – water, food and medical supplies. Due to unsanitary conditions, infections are massively spreading through the settlements. Let's take Rubizhne or Severodonetsk. These cities will not be able to enter the heating season and there will be a huge problem. There is water that is taken from wells because the central water supply is destroyed. So this water is already contaminated, because they haven't taken out the killed people for a long time. Now people are being poisoned in mass. Dysentery is a huge problem. Sergei Haidai, head of the Luhansk Regional Military Administration on Facebook. 
The military are advising the local population to leave the dangerous areas of the Kherson and Mykolaiv regions. There is a road of life in the direction of Zaporizhia. Evacuation from Kherson continues. Of course, there is no agreement with the occupiers as well as no special corridors. But for now, we have a small road of life in the direction of Zaporizhia. Cars are still leaving little by little. There is also an option to evacuate through the temporarily occupied Crimea. Ukrzaliznitsa Ukrainian Railways also appointed an additional evacuation train for August 2nd from Pokrovsk in the Donetsk region to Lviv. According to the schedule, it should leave at 4.30 p.m. However, the departure time may change. Reported by Marina Stepanenko, Natalia Hayevska, UATV News. Every, every few days, I do like to show you some of that. First of all, you get the translation. Um, but secondly, you get to see the images, not just pictures or the, some of the videos that I show, but you get to see the whole story. Um, and over the days, you've come to know many of those people, such as Vitaly Kim out of Kherson in Mikolaev area, and as well as Sergei Gadai in Lugansk. These are extremely reputable sources from day one. And um, what they're telling us is the truth. I do know, I was talking with Zhenya early to, earlier today, and for those of you that are new, Zhenya's our partner there on the ground in Ukraine, and um, he should be on with, with me tomorrow night. Um, but I was speaking to him about the sickness and disease situation there in the East because I was reading some other stuff about that today, and he said, listen, no exaggeration. In many of these cities that have been leveled, the dead are just there, the water is just there, um, and it's it's basically poisoned, and the people are getting very ill. Um, now, let me go to the chat for a moment here. Uh, CZ, Ukraine has become an inspiration to the world. Yes, combat. Uh, so I'm sorry. I do not want to um, say your name wrong, but I'm going to guess Desaid. Um combat veteran here first let me stop there thank you for your service um lots of veterans watch this stream and have become a great resource for us getting to share the information out so thank you please don't forget to hit those like buttons little thumbs up below the video hitting that button is the least we can do can even say we helping them. That is correct. Berserk makes sense. Firecracker 10. Here you go. Read that Russia is accusing the U.S. of being involved. You are prophetic. That is getting ready to come up in the update tonight on behalf of Ukraine. Do you think it's a matter of time before we really get involved? I have a theory about that. And it's going to be coming up in just a few moments. And Rick Berry... Not to get off subject, PG, but how is Holly doing? We'll lift her up in prayer this morning. Yes, my wife had to make a trip to the hospital this morning. We had a great adventure, and um, thank you for that. She's doing well. She's home. Well, she's not doing well, but she's home and on the route to well. Um, her thyroid numbers got extremely off. I think you're supposed to be around three. She wanted to go to 31, so it just... Uh, messed up everything, but doing well, and thank you for that very much. Now, updated destruction numbers. This was released to, uh, to the world today by Ukraine. This is written in Ukrainian. The headline states, these are the regions where 97% of the damage in the nation has taken place by dollar value. And you can see there, and just look around, you know these places, 3.6% billion in Mikolaya, 5.9 billion in Hitterson. I know it looks like an M and it you say that's a million. Well, milliard is billion in Ukrainian language or Russian language. Zaporozhia, 6.1 billion, 22 billion. Donetsk, 14 billion. Lugansk, 6, 15 billion. Um, Kharkiv and so on. $96 billion of damage and the updated number today, 140,000 residential dwellings have been destroyed. Earlier in the stream, I showed you a video out of Chernigov where you saw this man's home destroyed. Three generations have lived there. Now, just multiply that. 140,000 residential dwellings destroyed. Now, of course, the culture is different there than ours here in America. 
in some major urban areas. We do have lots of apartment building blocks and um, tight living like you see in all these videos in Ukraine. So a lot of these buildings have been destroyed where there you will have 100 residences in one building, but as well, single dwelling homes as well uh, being destroyed throughout Ukraine. Now, here you go, CZ. I think it was you. No, it was a uh, firecracker. Russia directly accuses the United States of Ukraine intervention. Yes, I read the article, not in English today, but I checked it in the Russian language, and here's what they were accusing the United States of. It comes down to one thing, and on the right, I have a zero there because that answers this little thing that's been running around that Russia has destroyed four of the HIMARS systems. But directly out of Russian news today, the intervention is due to the HIMARS and to the um, equipment that the United States has been sending into Ukraine that basically is turning the tide of the war in some areas. Example, Antonovsky Bridge. So the direct intervention is because of the quality of the armaments that we are providing them with, with the HIMARS systems. Well, just wait um, when they get the extended range, and then you're really going to complain. But here's what I want to tell you tonight. This was released by Kiev today. Do not believe anything you see about HIMARS being destroyed. Russia has destroyed zero. All HIMARS are active in place. Um, everything is good. But that is um, the accusation from Russia towards the United States. Yes, that heats it up, but... I have a theory on the heat up, and I'm going to share it with you guys in just a moment. Now, earlier, um, over the last few days, we've been talking about Olenivka. And remember, I try to teach you the language as well. The accent, 99% of the time, goes on the second syllable of the word. So it's not Olenovka or Olenivka, it's Olenivka. Olenivka and the Azov. So, I want you guys tonight to take a look at this and then I'm going to show you a video um, in regard to this because we need to lay this down once and for all. I actually received a lot of messages after the first update three or four days ago on the Alenivka situation. And I had people telling me, oh, Ukraine hit it with a high Mars. Oh, Russia hit it with a missile, whatever. And I kept saying, no. I'm pretty sure everything I'm seeing is something happened on the inside for an incendiary device. Something happened to burn that building up. I'm going to show you a video update on that in just a moment because the world needs to lay this to rest. Why? Because the Russian Federation came out today in their court system and deemed the Azov Regiment a state sponsor of terror terrorism organization. You may say, okay, well, what does that mean in Russia? Does that mean they can kill them? No, they will kill them if they want to kill them. But what it does mean is they can give them all life sentences. They can extend their prison sentences. It changes the game there for what they can do with the Azov. So I want you to look at this picture. I have a black arrow drawn in the red square is the building where the Azov and other soldiers were that were killed in Alenivka. Now, while you're looking at this, just look around. Look over to the top left and see the green trees. Look to the bottom left. See the long building with looks like trash in the, in the dirt there. Now, come over below the red. You see a building with a courtyard in the middle, it, in the middle of it. Look north or above the red square. You see these other buildings. One is a Quonset hut. Over to the right, the red roofed building. Now, let's take a look at after the strike. Of course, the color is going to be different. It's not an edit. There's no scamming going on here. But you can see the building destroyed. It's obvious. So just look at the arrow tip. 
There the building stands. There the building, the roof is gone. Look, trees, upper left, clean. Look in the bottom left. You say, oh, well, there's some strike residue. No, that's the trash that was still on the ground. Look at the bottom building. Folks, if this had been struck by missiles or even major shelling, <laughs> these other buildings would at least have damage. And there is none. Absolutely none. So we're out to reiterate the truth that this absolutely was an inside job. This is a photo from inside. You know, I'm assuming, I don't know, I'm not a munitions expert, but I know that we do have some in here. Um, I just have to believe that if this was struck with shelling or some type of missile system, that these iron beds or metal bed frames would be at least mangled. I mean, I see one or two bent. Uh, the little fuzzy areas there are actually bodies. They're blurred out. But wouldn't they be like, blown up this is the point this is inside um job elena couldn't the azov here is the statement from the azov and it's worthy of being read after the public execution of the prisoners of the war of the azov Re regiment in elenovka rush russia is looking for new excuses and explanations for its war crimes the supreme court of russia recognized the azov Reg regiment as a terrorist organization this pathetic empire, and I am, I have translated this. This is a direct statement from the Azov Regiment. This pathetic empire, which every day threatens to destroy the civilized world with nuclear weapons, whose president said he will slay his opponents in their outhouse, blew up houses with its own citizens, suffocated its own, and Syrian women and children with poisonous gas, must be punished once and for all. We call on the U.S. State Department and authorized bodies of other states that consider themselves civilized to recognize the Russian Federation as a terrorist state. Russia has been proving this status with its daily actions for many years. Its army and special services commit war crimes every day. Acquiescence to these crimes or silence is complicity. The whole world must unite once and for all against this terrorist state. Glory to Ukraine. Victory is ours. Azov Regiment. You see, this Elenivka deal has really been major news, especially over in Ukraine, Russia, and Europe, trying to figure out who did this and validate that Ukraine did not strike. And folks, I think we've seen enough. Um, to show you that I will give you one more clip here and here it is This is the interception of a telephone conversation between two fighters of the so-called Donetsk People's Republic Army The audio recording was published by the security service of Ukraine on the day when the terrorist attack took place in the occupied Alenivka Donetsk region According to one of the interlocutors the prisoners of war were transferred to these quarters a few days before the explosion and on the night of their death according to the intercept they did not hear the sound of incoming missiles. Before the explosions, only automatic bursts were heard. The Institute for the Study of War claims that the damage from the fire does not look like a HIMARS missile strike. Judging by the photo and video evidence, the epicenter of the explosion was inside the building, experts say. It is noteworthy that not a single building nearby was damaged except for the barracks with prisoners of war. And the Ukrainian general staff does not confirm the work of the missile troops that day in the direction of Alenivka. The killing of prisoners of war is the work of the Russian military, the Ukrainian side insists. Thus, the Russian invaders pursued their criminal goals to accuse Ukraine of committing war crimes, as well as to hide the torture of prisoners and executions on the orders of the occupation administration and the command of the Russian armed forces in the temporary occupied territory of the Donetsk region. 
from the message of the general staff of the armed forces of Ukraine on Facebook. Official Kyiv already has several versions of what happened. However, experts do not doubt that the tragedy has a Russian trace. What difference does it make who exactly the terrorists are? Wagner private military company or the Russian army? Russia is a terrorist state. What difference does it make which terrorists committed this act? You need an investigation. You need proof. But there are such things as reputation and interest. Does anyone have an interest in committing such a crime? And of course, everyone points to Russia. And we know about the reputation of this terrorist country. What they are doing, how they are bombing Ukraine, killing children here, civilians, destroying infrastructure and so on. And in general, to unleash such a full-scale war. Therefore, of course, there is small confidence that Russia did it. Meanwhile, relatives of the killed and wounded prisoners of war insist on a fair investigation into the attack. The Office of the President proposes to involve representatives of the International Committee of the Red Cross and the United Nations. However, the Russian side is blocking this process. The media continue to write about the attack on Olenivka. Is there any evidence of a hit? First, satellite images show that only the building was damaged. Second, right before the attack, the prisoners were transferred there. Third, analysis of the photo indicates a thermobaric explosion from within. Hit? No, a terrorist attack. Mikhail Podolyak, advisor to the head of the Office of the President of Ukraine on Twitter. Meanwhile, the Azov regiment stated that they regard the mass murder of Ukrainian prisoners of war as an act of public execution and a violation of the customs of war, and brothers in arms of those who were killed as a result of the terrorist act are already collecting information about the victims and possible organizers and perpetrators of the crime. Reported by Marina Stepanenko, Larissa Zubenko, UATV News. So there you have it. It was worth spending eight or nine minutes on tonight because it still is a major, major issue, um, especially in Ukraine and Russia. Um, any more info on the graves at the site? No, sir. Um, good evening to you there in Manila, Philippines, my friend, Ghani King King. Um, I have issue with some of the intercepts being posted on social media, talks to specific regional conversations from the field. I would agree with that. In fact, the earlier conversations I clipped out because it was nothing but cursing and translated. Um, I will tell you this culturally. When Slavs speak, uh, Russians, Ukrainians, um, Moldovans, when they speak to each other, they do speak in detail. I mean, it's really interesting culturally how they speak. Um, when you know the language and you know the culture, so maybe this will help you a little bit. Um, w when you talk about going to the store, you actually give the detail. I went to the second row. I went to the third shelf and there was the purple can of coffee i opened the coffee and i smelled it um very detailed we're in just common english we'd say i went to the coffee aisle so there is some cultural thing there but yes i try to watch all of that mess now two last topics of the day and we will be up to date tonight of course we're going to talk about medvedev in the moment um but before that we have to talk about this, and I'm going to give you my theory. Facts. Facts only. You may ask, if you're watching in the United States on the East Coast, it is 9.39 p.m. Eastern Standard. It's 6.39. We are 100% live. Uh, 4.39 a.m. in Ukraine. You may be wondering, what time is it in Taiwan? plus 12 from Eastern Standard Time. It's 9.39 a.m. In, in Taiwan. We're just getting going. So here are the facts. We're only going to give facts. For example, let me show you something that is not facts. A couple of hours ago, media was going crazy that China was firing at 
Taiwan, right close up to the island. And this is what was sent. <laughs> And the media was running crazy with it. But then they all had to back up. I already knew it because I had that video three days ago. This was them shooting into the Straits of Taiwan, but it was three days ago and two days ago. This was not just a couple of hours ago. So here are the facts. China, Taiwan, United States. Nancy Pelosi's quote, We cannot stand by as the CCP, Chinese Communist Party, proceeds to threaten Taiwan and democracy itself. Lay all of your politics down, all of your opinions. We're not here to talk about that. I know we all have our own views and our thoughts about American government, especially if you're in here watching from the U.S. Um, that was her quote. quote. Now, what has happened? Number one, Pelosi is in Taiwan. Number two, she is the highest ranking U.S. official on Taiwanese soil in 25 years. The last Speaker of the House to visit there was... Newt Gingrich. There has only been one president of the United States ever visit there. Dwight D. Eisenhower. Number three, China came out and officially condemned. Fourth, yes, China and Taiwan both have had planes in the air, running their little routes, running up against the borders. These are facts. Now, what's going to happen today, which is beginning now, Wednesday morning, they have a meeting with who? The Taiwanese president. And then they are planning to have lunch. Chinese Foreign Ministry released a statement says that the visit has a severe impact on the political foundation of China-U.S. relations and seriously infringes upon China's sovereignty and territorial integrity. These moves, like playing with fire, are extremely dangerous. Those who play with fire will perish by it. Now, I believe that this will if this continues the way it's going, um, will ult ultimately connect to Russia and Ukraine. And I'm going to explain to you how. Number one, here's the deal. She is backed into a corner now, much like Putin was. Why? Because he is the one that came out aggressively and said, if you play with fire, you're going to get burned by fire. And all the threats, firing off their guns, here comes the Ronald Reagan battle group positioning itself right behind the island. What's she going to do? I'm going to tell you what she's going to do. Absolutely nothing. He right now is humiliated. Now, this is videoed and recorded, and I may have to come back tomorrow night and say, I was dead wrong, and if I am, I'll play this clip. But she is going to do nothing. Why? He already has an economic stranglehold on the world. He's already got the Silk Road. He's already in partnership with Russia. Yes, this is egg on his face as the supreme leader of China, and it is yet to be seen. This is not over yet. Do I think they're going to start striking Taiwan? Absolutely not. Do I think he's got to deal with the embarrassment here of making all these bold statements and then doing nothing? Yes. But here's what I think. We already know that Russia and Moscow are in cahoots economically. China, Russia and Moscow, Beijing and Moscow, China and Moscow, Putin and Xi. China has some of the most advanced drones in the world. And I was reading some stuff already on this. Um, and here's what I think is going to happen. America has challenged Xi and China over Taiwan. I think they'll back down. But what I think this is going to do is all we have done is push China and Russia, Russia closer together. I think we have pushed China and Russia closer together. How is China now going to slap back at America? Well, it was the... United States that was accused today of fighting in Ukraine due to the weapons supply from Russia themselves. China now being backed down. Who are they going to run to to put some egg back on America? 
I think it's going to go through Russia into Ukraine. I just believe that they're going to have a little egg right now. They're not going to respond over Taiwan. But we're going to see some further influence um, and activity. Aguia de Mal. So you're down there in Brazil. Welcome. Your English is pretty good, man, because I would imagine you speak Portuguese. Um, so that's where I think those are facts. Now, Vladimir Putin in response. This is why I'm saying what I'm saying. Vladimir Putin in response today to Pelosi landing said, and I quote, the Russian Federation, I'm sorry, Vladimir Zhraganov said the Russian Federation has no reason to refuse assistance to the PRC in the event of an armed conflict in Taiwan if they ask for it. Vladimir Zhabarov, first deputy chairman of the Federation Council Committee on Foreign Affairs. We already know this is exactly what Putin wanted. This is not what she wanted. I guarantee you he wanted Pelosi to hit the Asian nations, her fly back to America, and he could stick out his chest and say, <clears throat> we really do rule the world. But it didn't happen. She landed. Now, what's he going to do? You're going to see that group right there get closer than ever. Finally, last thing tonight, do not sleep on Medvedev. That is the title of the program tonight, The Influence of Medvedev, and also the current update on Taiwan. We went through everything tonight. Who is Medvedev? The foreign, um, the former president of Russia. He basically switched places with Putin so Putin could rotate out and then rotate back in. Last night, Medvedev posted on Vkontakt.ru, not on Twitter, not on Facebook, but actually on Vkontakt. Now, in Europe, Ukraine, Russia, all throughout that region, Vkontakt, I know it sounds like I'm saying V contact because I am. It's spelled V K O N T A K T E dot R U for Russia. It's a Russian Facebook. It has been around equal to that of Facebook. It is exactly similar um, in concept to Facebook and social media. Medvedev last night. Former President Dmitry Medvedev published the following in the contact. He said the special operation in Ukraine won't end in Kiev and that the final goal of Russia is full restoration of the Soviet Union. Medvedev went on to proclaim that Georgia and Kazakhstan are made up countries that shouldn't exist as independent states. He said the war won't end in Ukraine. Kazakhstan and Georgia will be next. Poland and the Baltic states will be next. Finland and Moldova, Armenia, Azerbaijan. Putin won't stop unless he is stopped in Ukraine. The sooner the West realizes it, the better. Medvedev is deputy head of Russia's Security Council. And I'm sure that this rhetoric he accidentally used in public is right in line with what that council believes. Now, here's what I can tell you. Medvedev has alcohol issues. Most likely, and this is out of Russian media, this is not Ukrainian media, Russian media, he was a little bit under the influence last night and started writing. Um, it was taken down in 10 minutes, but it was too late. I have the copy of it in Russian. I've translated it there for you. Of course, it went everywhere. Um, somebody of that level, everybody sees it, it's shared. Forget it. You're not taking it down. So this is his statements, though. And to ignore them and just say, oh, he was in a stupor. Yeah, we can do that. But my friends, do not sleep on Medvedev. Um, we think, well, if we can just get rid of Putin, you know, everything goes away. I'm just here to tell you, there's some other pretty tough guys there um, that have similar concepts, similar thinking, similar plans for the future of Russia and Europe. So there you have, guys. That is the update. Thank you very, very much. Um, so firecracker, my 11 year old nephew is fascinated with history and the war and wanted to type this question. Well, he typed it. So let me put it up here. Uh, we'll just, uh, there you go. There you go, my man. 
my 11 year old nephew nephew is fascinated um with the war or with history and the war and wanted to type this question what does azov stand for it stands for azov why because it is named after that region of the world let me see if i can get it here um where are the here we go. Boop. Look right here. The Sea of Azov. This is a historical geographical term. And this Azov region. Okay, so here we go, guys. This is the lesson. This Azov region. It's not a neo-Nazi group. It's not a Nazi symbol. This is a regional area of Azov. And this is the region right here. So you got Mariupol, Donetsk, and you've got the Sea of Azov. So it is not an acronym. It does not stand for anything other than that geographical, historical thing. So there you have it. And that's the answer to your question. Much appreciated. God bless you. Jeffrey Burnett, thank you for all of your help. I saw you working, man, and you helped me out immensely tonight. Guys, thank you. Thank you for being here. Thank you for sharing, liking, commenting to all of our veterans, to all of those in active service. God bless you, and peace to you tonight, and of course, peace to Ukraine. We'll see you in 23 hours. Be blessed. Good night. <laughs>